Hello guys, welcome back and thank you for joining me for some more Star Trek The Original Series. Today we're going to be watching an episode called Patterns of Force from Season 2. I think we're getting close-ish to the end of Season 2, which is exciting. I've been trying to think of what's in my top 10 so far and looking at the episodes that we watched, it's already going to be really tough and we're not even done yet. There's already more than 10 that I would definitely consider putting in a top 10. So I'm very eager to complete the season and then we can move on to season three and then everything else after that. Ah! Okay, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the comments. Devora, try to raise John Gill on Starfleet Communications. Been trying for six months if he's still alive. Isn't it unlikely that he'd receive us now? I don't know, Bone. It was my instructor at the academy. How come Kirk always knows all these people that are getting into trouble? Is it bad luck to become close with James Kirk? I mean, it has sophisticated detection devices, which neither Zeon nor Echo should have. It is an unmanned probe which seems to be carrying a warhead. Oh. Fire! Ah! Thermonuclear warhead. Generations ahead of where these people should be technically. Maybe they had help. Is it the Klingons again? So I take it it's another civilization that should not have the kind of technical capabilities that they seem to have currently. I feel like from now on, every time that we're looking for a specific person, Kirk is gonna be like, Oh, I knew that guy. I went to Academy with him. Oh, I went on a mission with him. Oh, that's my brother. Oh. <laughs> According to our records, the Ecosians are a primitive, warlike people in a state of anarchy. The other planet, Zeon, has a relatively high technology, and its people are peaceful. Insert the transponder back. <gasps> the beanie's back. The Spock we beanie's back. We fail to make back. contact at the appointed time. Take our coordinates from the transponder and beam us aboard, no matter what our condition may be. So are we going to the primitive planet that's warlike in a state of anarchy or the more advanced peaceful one? I missed that. I guess we're going to find out. We're looking good. Spock's sweater's a little bit oversized. Maybe that's just the style. There's a hole in it. Hide! They're right behind me! On your feet, pig. <gasps> oh. Oh? Captain, the non interference directive. But they're Nazis. Do you recognize those uniforms? Mid 20th century Earth, the nation state called Nazi Germany. Yeah, what's that doing here? Starting at dawn, our heroic troops began flushing out the Zeon monsters who've been poisoning our planet. How could this have happened? Like Nazi Germany using the forms, the symbols, the uniforms. Somebody, somebody did something. Somebody from outside. At this patriotic demonstration, Deputy Fuhrer Malakon presented the Iron Cross, second class to Darius, hero of the fatherland. Long live the Fuhrer. That's John Gill. Oh. The Fuhrer? Ah? Uh? You're right, he's not one of us. What do you mean? Look at him. <laughs> I love it when they do that. <laughs> that helmet covers a multitude of sins. Aw, his ears aren't sins. A Zeon? Yes, obviously he's not one of us. I captured him. Today we have a surprise planned for you, Zeon. Your uniform, Captain. You should make a very convincing Nazi. <laughs> what? This is gonna be an episode. Your papers. Your orders, Lieutenant. He wants to see your orders in the jacket. He captured several Zeons single-handed. Good work, Lieutenant. Hail the Fuhrer. Hail to the Fuhrer. Hail to... <laughs> Lieutenant, your helmet. Remove it. Why? Well, now what? Well, that escalated quickly. Tell me your orders. 
You were sent here to kill our fear, our confess. A rather one-sided conversation, Major. Why are his pecs twitching? Let me speak to your Fuhrer. I'll tell him everything he wants to know. Major. Ah, Chairman Enig. You are not from Zeon. Obviously. <laughs> what is your business with the Fuhrer? I'll discuss that only with him. Oh! That's enough, Major. Lock them up. Excellency, the standing order is to interrogate and execute. Hold them for an hour. Excellency, the order is... That is my order, Major. Who's this guy in the cage they keep showing? One of the Zeons, I guess. Zeon? John Gill was the kindest, gentlest man I ever knew for him to be a Nazi. I'm curious, too. How did he become in this situation? Why do the Nazis treat you as enemies? Why do the Nazis hate Zeons? Because without us, the hate would be nothing to hold them together. We came here, we thought we were civilizing the Ecosians. Were they like this when you first came here? But not vicious. That started when the Nazi movement began. It was only a few years ago. It would coincide with the time of John Gill's arrival. Taking life is so repugnant to our people, I'm afraid we'll go down without a struggle. We must get our communicators. Contact the ship. They have the injections. The transponders. Yes. And a way to shed some light on the gloom, Mr. Spock. Are you trying to kill yourselves? I'm trying to get tetanus or something. Are they digging them out? Oh, they are. It's necessary to hold the crystals rigidly at a specific distance. There. That is, of course, crude estimation. To reach that light, I should require some sort of platform. I would be up. Oh, is that the best way? It's going to mess up his knee. Or, oh, gosh. Okay. I'm sure they know what they're doing. Oh! Mr. Spark, the guard did a very professional job on my back. I'd appreciate it if you'd hurry. <laughs> you realize that the aim will, of course, be very crude. I don't care if you hit the broad side of a barn. Just hurry, please. <laughs> Why should I aim at such a structure? <laughs> Beautiful. Spock, Spock. Over there. I'll create a commotion. So I thought they needed the transponders to, like, get beamed back up later or something. Take me with you or you'll never find the laboratory. He's got a point. He's our guide. Which is the laboratory door? At the end of the hall. This is, there's no way this is gonna work. All right, Zion pigs, move. Don't worry, they're on their way to the laboratory for experimental work. They'll pay. Move! I guess it worked. Here they are, the communicators. Disassembled. Can you get one to work? Possibly. Well, they disassembled their communicators. That's great. Nice one. We can steal a car, get out of the capital. Came to get John Gill. It is illogical to assume that we can hold out against the entire military force of this planet. All right, Mr. Spock, you made your point. Get into the uniform and hide those ears again. <laughs> Someone's waiting for us? Who's with you? Oh, this... Oh, we're... Okay. They helped me escape from the prison. I owe them my life. This is my brother. Oh, my brother. Why were you in that prison? I was trying to see the Fuhrer. If I can see him, there may be a way of stopping this insanity. Letty is dead. Shot down in the streets. She would have been my wife. Oh, no. His fiance. She lived for five hours while they walked past her and spat on her. She was di dying for five hours being spat on? If we adopt her. Ways with the Nazis. We're as bad as the Nazis. Uh, using parts from both, I've completed one communicator. The Enterprise won't be within range for another hour. What now? Over there, next to the wall. Oh, oh no. The screen, Captain, the one receiving the medal. Hands in the air, Zeon Swine. I must see the Fuhrer. It's urgent. Urgent? I alone am responsible for what happens here. Say 
find out his brother? That was so uncalled for. Why did she do that? After you killed the last of us all, what do you do? Turn the guns against yourselves? No, don't shoot. No. Wait. Oh. oh. No more. He's okay? You've proved they're on our side. But we had to be absolutely certain. Oh. If you had been Nazi spies, all right, leave us. Oh, it was just a prank. But this young lady is a Nazi. I'm an Ekoshian, fighting the terrible thing that's happened to my people. The decoration it was for betraying my own father to the party. It was my father's idea. Melikon sentenced him to death. Melikon? The deputy Fuhrer. He's taken over. So she's like a double agent or whatever? John Gill, your Fuhrer, was sent here by the Federation as a cultural observer. That the Fuhrer is an alien? That is correct. But I always thought he was one of us. Now to hear that he's an alien sent here to destroy us. That was not his mission. No, just to observe. To observe, not to interfere. Something went wrong. We must see him. It's impossible. He sees no one, uh, no one but Malakan. Is he even alive? Or is he even the one who's in charge over there? This goes against every principle that John Gill ever believed. He might be a prisoner. He makes a speech tonight from the Chancellery. All the top party officials will be there. Will you be there? Of course. You must get us in there. It would be suicide. Well, it's a risk living in all the way things are going. Now, if the captain believes he has a chance, I'm willing to commit suicide with him. Jeez. You expect to get into the Chancellery? It's even more my fight than yours. The Fear Special Documentary Corps. Smile, Corporal. <laughs> They're filming a documentary. Nice cover. I'm beginning to understand why you Earthmen enjoy gambling. There is still a certain exhilaration in the risk. Very good, Spock. <laughs> we may make a human of you yet. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> is this the time to be bringing that up? Where does the Fuhrer enter? He doesn't. They watch him on the big screen. He broadcasts from the booth for security. We've got the booth curtained off. So he's in that little booth? Why is he just... And Where's he, the entrance to the broadcast booth? It's on the screen? Yeah, at the end of the corridor. If he's so close, why doesn't he just give the speech in person? Because there's something fishy going on. Lights, please. Pollution speech. We're documenting the men responding. Story with my movie closing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You must get shot down the hall. It was John Gill, but he never moved, never once looked up. He may be drugged. We need McCoy. Spark to Enterprise. Enterprise, Lieutenant Uhura. Nice. Good job, Spock. I want McCoy outfitted as a Gestapo doctor. Nazi Germany, old Earth date, 1944. Make him a colonel. And no questions. <laughs> well, what have you got, Jim? We found John Gill. At least we've seen him. He may be drugged, hypnotized, or psychotic. You'll have to make a determination. They picked up your broadcast and pinpointed it within this building. Dr. McCoy is having difficulty with that uniform, sir. Well, send him down naked if you have to. Kirk out. Don't do that. <laughs> He's still getting dressed. Stupid computer made a mistake in the measurements, all right? Boots too tight. We have no time for emotionalism. <laughs> this is Dr. McCoy, our chief medical officer. Darris. Grumpy guy is here. What in blazes is this? <laughs> what the hell is going on? I am happy that Bones is here now. It's gonna be so good. The uh, colonel is drunk. Is a little too much to drink? I see. There's a spy in this building with a secret transmitter. We're conducting a search. Hail the Fuhrer. Hail the Fuhrer. Hail the Fuhrer. <laughs> well, Captain, I do not understand how he failed to recognize us. Not do I. Oh, yeah, that's the same guy, and he would have... Yeah, recognize them. Maybe he did. I don't know. Hail of you! Hail of you! The job ahead is difficult. It requires courage. You can't even see his mouth moving. That might not even be him talking. Watch his mouth. If we fulfill our own greatness... I don't think it's moving at all. He looks drugged, Jim. Almost at a cataleptic state. Let's get a close look at him. 
Smile and now. The juror has given us our orders. Death to Zeon. Death to Zeon. Mm -mm. No one in the room with him? Definitely drugged, almost comatose. So anything you can do for him. I can give him a general right, stimulant, but it would be risky. Take the risk. This poor guy. There's no reaction. Like it is w gave him his work. Increase the dose. I'm working in the dark. I could kill him. Within an hour, the Zeon blight will forever be removed from Echos. It's finally begun. The stimulant's working. Glorious final. It's almost like he's in a light sleep. Spark, try to get through to him with a mind probe. If you can't, Bones, you'll have to use a stronger stimulant no matter what it does. This is serious. Man, they don't have many options here and they don't have any more time. Because a stronger stimulant might kill him. If you'd use the weapons you have, you could destroy the fleet. I mean the death of thousands of Ecosian spacemen. Yes, but against those thousands are millions upon millions of innocent Zeon lives. We've got to choose the lesser of two evils. Not until we try every other option first. I've created a condition in which he can reply to questions. They've kept what's left of him as a figurehead. For the last few years, the real power has been Melicon. I thought so. Yes. Gil, why did you abandon your mission? Why did you interfere with this culture? Planet divided, took lesson from Earth history. But why Nazi Germany? Most efficient state Earth ever knew. It was brutal, perverted. Yeah. Perhaps Gil felt that such a state run benignly could accomplish its efficiency without sadism. At first, it worked. Then Melikon began to take over. So he was trying to use the, that structure for good. You're the only one who could prevent the slaughter. He dead? He's still alive, but the drug they use is too strong. The bones give him another shot. I don't dare. We've run out of time, bones. Hey, man, Spock. Spock, take off the helmet. Poor Spock. She captured a Seon spy that was attempting to assassinate the Fuhrer. Gods, this spy must be taken to another. Alive, preferably. Pass them on my responsibility. Enig is one of us. Stall for time. And hope. He's giving him the hypo. Against the doctor's recommendation. You've got to speak got to speak. This is our last chance. Note the sinister eyes and the malformed ears. Definitely an inferior race. <laughs> malformed inferior? Professor, you've got to talk. Come on, professor. Come on. Come on. Oh, leave the poor guy alone. Note the low forehead denoting stupidity. <laughs> the dull look of a trapped animal. People. People. Turn off that camera. I suggest we leave and let our Fuhrer rest. I ordered the immediate recall of the space fleet. All units are to return to base. Malachan is a traitor to his own people. And... Oh. Wait, Sylvia. There's been enough killing. Now we'll start to live the way the Fuhrer meant us to live. Did the Zeon guy the non shoot him? The non-interference. must stop the slaughter. You did that, Professor. Even historians fail to learn from history. They repeat the same mistakes. Well, hopefully we don't repeat this mistake anytime soon. This definitely seems like a, a tale of caution, a warning. For so long, I've prayed for this. Now I'm sorry. So is he. And Nick and I will go in the air, offer a new way for our people, for all our people. It is time to stop the bloodshed, to bury our dead. So that guy was on our side the whole time? Captain, I never will understand humans. Neither will I. But the main problem, I think, was the leader principle. What he's saying, Spock, is that a man holds that much power, just can't resist the urge to play God. Thank you, Doctor. I was able to gather the meaning. I needed that explanation. Thank you, Bones. I appreciate you. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. I've heard that before. Your whole Earth history is made up of men seeking absolute power. 
Now, Spark, you obviously don't under... Obvious. Gentlemen, we've just been through one civil war. Let's not start another. I'm not even sure where to start with this one. I was definitely not suspecting that I was going to see the Nazi insignia and Nazis in a Star Trek The Original Series episode, but here we are. I wasn't sure where they were going to go with this, but I, I think I see where they were trying to go with it. I mean, it's not like it's... They kind of do spell it out um, at the end there, for sure. But before we get into that... One of the things that I really liked about this episode was all the twists and turns that happened as far as people being undercover, people being not what they appear, being spies for the other side, like the girl, like the guy who, when Kirk and Spock were being interrogated, had them locked up for an hour instead of having them executed right away. So he saved them, and of course, it was because he was on the side of being against the Nazis, so he was trying to help out. And we had one very evil, evil man who wanted power, who wanted to be the one pulling the strings, Malakon, And Gil gave Malakon an avenue to achieve that power. By setting up the structure that Nazi Germany used back then to achieve a goal super efficiently. But again, he was just sent to observe. And even if he was trying to do something good, he was not observing. Okay? He was setting up Nazi regimes even though he wanted them to be used for the purpose of good. Why did he do that? Why? He was just supposed to observe, right? And I guess he just saw this fragmented world, this fragmented people, and wanted to try to fix them according to what he thought was the best way. And it reinforces why the Prime Directive is a thing and why it's so important to follow it and not mess around with other civilizations and just, just let them do their thing. Unless you're Kirk. Kirk can get away with it. Kirk knows better, <laughs> clearly, than to uh, set up a Nazi-like regime on a planet that is inhabited by warlike people. And if there's one thing that history has shown us is that history will repeat itself. And we will, over time forget our mistakes whether it takes tens hundreds or thousands of years eventually the lessons that we learn from our mistakes will be forgotten and history will repeat itself or somebody will think that they know better and that they can do things a better way but end up repeating tragedies it's always nice to see our boys get to play a little dress up, get to be in uniform. I would like to say that Bones looked especially dashing in his uh, uniform, though it was quite funny seeing him trying to get that boot on his foot. <laughs> and I don't know, I got a little bit amused at the one guy who was calling Spock inferior with a lower intelligence and Spock just with a slightly aggravated look, um, raising his eyebrow as he does at all these comments and probably not really getting angry at being personally attacked, but really, really wanting to say, actually, that is highly inaccurate. And let me tell you exactly why. <laughs> Quite the interesting episode. I would say great as all of these episodes that I've seen so far are, with some fantastic moments, a moral something to think about, great acting, and probably not one of my top episodes, but solid. And I have to wonder, does William Shatner just have a really naturally, like, hairless chest? Or do they shave it so that he could be, like, 
juxtaposed to Leonard Nimoy, who is like quite hairy, and then Shatner can be like hairless or whatever. I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> Does anybody know? <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. What do you think about this episode? Thank you in advance for leaving your comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!